as cheesy as it sounds, it's a very magical place. Here, Ibiza is very special. It's very uh, inspiring. Seriously, it sounds cheesy, but it's really like that. Conversations. Hey Zook family, welcome back. It's another chance to talk to an international superstar DJ. This one comes straight from the heart. Plastic Funk have played not only at the HQ in Singapore, but also played in Kuala Lumpur. Not had the chance to play in Genting yet because this horrible pandemic has stopped us from welcoming people over, but soon. Raf, how have you been? What have you been up to? And how has the last year been treating you? Yeah, where should I, where should I start? <laughs> it's just, uh, it's been a crazy year. It's been a, a roller coaster of, of uh, 2020. But uh, actually, I've been good because I was producing a lot of music. Um, I had the chance to tour through Asia. Actually, I stopped in Singapore and Malaysia in January, right before everything was closing down. So lucky me, <laughs> I was at Souk uh, before everything was going down. Um, I was producing a lot. I think uh, this year I, I released more music than ever before. I think now, like end of the 2020, it will be around 10, 12 releases. We just signed another record to Mix Mesh today. So I don't know if we release it in December or January. So quite a lot of outputs and the records were doing really well. Uh, we got good streams like the collab with Nervo is hitting the 7 million streams now. Uh, the collab with Timmy Trumpet is still getting bigger. And yeah, the track, I just released my first track with Hexagon, which was for me a very special one because Hexagon always was one of the labels I wanted to release with. I'm really looking up to Don, a uh, great, great musician and artist to look up to. And uh, yeah, very challenging year, you know, it's try to find new concepts to DJ. Uh, we had some parties during the summer in Germany uh, with tables, uh, drive-ins. We tried to make it possible. We tried to stay uh, in contact with the fans and try to have, yeah, try to have parties somehow. Safe, but uh, yeah, I needed to get back together with the, with the fans. But to be honest, there's also another reason to celebrate. You guys featured in the top 100 DJs. You must be pleased. Yeah, man. <laughs> I celebrated Saturday night with friends. I celebrated yesterday. And better today. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, it's, it's the first time for me in my career to, to enter the top 100, especially in a year like this, you know, where it's it's been tough, you know, for everyone. And I was working my ass off the whole year to 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 DJ to to produce and to stay positive but to get voted by the fans and I didn't really have the budget to promote we just uh, spread the word and all the agents from all around the world were like helping and pushing and I got like during the voting process I got so many messages we counted I stopped counting at around 800 uh, tags you know i got all the instagram tags and we tried to repost it as much as possible it, it was just incredible and now like to, with the announcement 85 new entry man i still can't believe it it will take me some days to realize it <laughs> hey enjoy it while you can enjoy it while you can and of course next year after all of the releases you're gonna have this year i'm sure it will go up and up so congratulations again Thanks and a lot. Uh, you said obviously you came traveling how was your experience at zook you must have enjoyed yourself Oh man, yeah, it was uh, it was January and uh, I was touring in China and had I was flying from China to to Kuala Lumpur and back to China and then did other shows in China and then I was flying to Singapore and after Singapore I left to Europe. So it was pretty long flights and I didn't know what to expect, um, but I just heard so much good stuff about two clubs. And I played in Singapore before, I played in Kuala Lumpur before, but I'd never seen the Sioux clubs in life. I just saw the pictures. And Sing uh, Kuala Lumpur was insane. <laughs> the energy in that place, that's, uh, it was crazy. I stayed like, I don't mean my flight next morning was like eight o'clock and we stayed in the club until five. Uh, just hang out and feel the energy. It was so much fun. It was crazy. I had like uh, fans in the first row with Plastic Funk t-shirts to see this in Malaysia, so far from home. It's always, uh, it feels it feels amazing, man. And in Singapore, well, yeah, it was the last show in Asia before I got back. And it was already a bit of a difficult situation in Singapore. Remember the Sunday after the show, we went into the city, 
took some pictures and already everywhere everyone was wearing the mask and tried to keep distance. Uh, Singapore is very organized, so you feel safe, you know, but um, it was was a weird feeling. But Singapore, uh, man, the party was crazy as well. <laughs> you must have a soft spot for Asia, and I know that you're trying to get back out here soon. Yeah, man, uh, I can't wait. Uh, my last show in Asia was February, February at the Japan and, and Thailand. And um, actually, I'm, I'm in China home, like around every six, seven weeks. And now we have quite a lot of offers on the table, especially after Saturday with the announcement of the top 100. It got even more. And I always played a lot in China, but now it's, uh, yeah, it's getting crazy. So I can't wait to get back and stay a couple months in Asia and just DJ as much as I can. So you're based out of Ibiza at the moment, making your music. It must be quite a good place, especially with, I mean, it's almost like a headquarter for dance music worldwide. And also Germany being so close to your heart, two places that are synonymous with dance music. It must be a good place to write music. Yeah, the cool thing is uh, in, in Germany, you have pretty, pretty nice studios. You have a lot of musicians working together, which is great. Ibiza, it's like, uh, you would say, like the capital of dance music in Europe. But um, at the moment, it's just a very sweet island <laughs> with good restaurants and beautiful beaches, which are empty um, because all the clubs uh, were closed down for the whole season. But on the other side, you have a lot of very talented producers and writers here on the island. If you know where to go and if you have uh, the possibility to go to one of the studios here, it's amazing to work together and as cheesy as it sounds, it's a very magical place. Ibiza is very special. It's very uh, uh, inspiring. Seriously, it sounds cheesy, but it's really like that. Everyone who's here is like, oh, something is on this side. Something is different here. It's a very special vibe. So uh, it's great to produce music here. And I think that's the reason why, I don't know, we released what it is, like around 10, 12 tracks this year and have another 10 tracks ready. And we are producing, we're about to release another one this Friday. So it's a huge output. And this is because I had more time to just work with other producers and musicians. I am. Um, I've been lucky enough to be there during a winter before I went to visit some friends. And they say that it's uh, volcanic rock, which is why it's, there's so much energy around Ibiza. I don't know if it's true sure. or not, but that's what I was told. Yeah, that's that's that definitely one thing. And the other thing is uh, we talk about here about the lights. Uh, the light here is very special, especially in the winter. I don't know if you realize that you have a different kind of, of color in the sky. It's it's beautiful. It's just like, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's like the water looks like like diamonds, you know, all day. So it's just, just amazing. The water is very clean, especially now with our with a low season, we have a lot of dolphins here. It's just beautiful, man. It's like great to hang out, great to to come down, and uh, you get the a free free mind to produce music and try to stay creative. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Let me ask you: Did you manage to pick up any other hobbies during this lockdown period? I mean, some people are now baking experts. Some people have gone <laughs> full to fitness. Anything you've got up your sleeve from your time in lockdown? Actually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it is, it's so funny, man. It's like um, DJs in lockdown. It's almost like like uh, like older guys in the midlife crisis. You know, you just look for some <laughs> new new challenges and try to find something to <laughs> to to stay stay on a high energy level. Uh, I mean, for me, sports always was a very important thing to stay uh, level uh, during while touring because I mean, I played last year. I played 190 shows in one year. So for me, sports always was something to get back on track and stay, stay not stay healthy. But now, yeah, man, I'm, I'm doing sports like five to six times a, a week. And uh, I found this new sport, which is called pedal tennis. It's of tennis and squash. It's like more or less the national sport of, of the Balearic Islands and all over Spain. And it's like, it's funny, man. It's like a lot of DJs who live here, uh, and all their teams are playing pedal tennis. So we have uh, some tournaments. It's it's a good chat with everyone. It's a good hangout. A lot of trash talk. <laughs> so <laughs> it's uh, it's amazing. We everyone who starts playing pedal tennis here gets addicted. Like everyone I brought there is playing every week now, and everyone is taking it very serious now. So yeah, <laughs> it's super fun. I've played it before. It's good fun, but never at a level where I'd be. It, it wouldn't be possible for me to give trash talk. I'm definitely not good enough. But uh, <laughs> any sport without trash talk is not real sport, as far as I'm concerned. I love the banter that goes with it. I totally agree, man. But but the cool thing with pedal tennis is if you at least know a bit how to play tennis, even it's different because you position yourself differently and you have to move a little in a different way than tennis. But 
you can play it. It's for people. It's a good hangout, you know. Um, it's a great sport. Hey, I, I look forward to seeing you in the top 100 paddle tennis players of the world. <laughs> yeah, we should start a list. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you. 2020, let's put it in the dustbin. Let's look to 2021. What are you looking forward to doing the most? Something I I um, realized through the, the pandemic and the lockdown time is how much you start appreciating again to DJ. So every show I played, especially with all these concepts, it was was kind of a uh, yeah was was stressful because uh, we were doing promoting some of the parties ourselves uh, which means like we had some talks with people from the government who were checking the boxes the safety regulations and everything and then to dj you i was so happy i was smiling like an idiot for the whole set you know because i was so happy to dj and see people in front of me so i'm really looking forward to go back on tour pack my bags uh, play a lot of different cities see different cultures again so the plan is to tour as much as possible uh, and play, release more music. I have uh, some call-ups ready, uh, which I really want to release as soon as possible, beginning of 2021. Uh, I have the first two releases scheduled for uh, 2021. In January, uh, I'm releasing a track on Mixmash. On February, I'm releasing a track on Revealed, the label of Hardwell. And uh, yeah, the rest will come step by step. So I'm really looking forward to our a year. I, I don't think it's gonna be like normal, like everything we how it was before to, uh, 2020 March, but at least going back to normal, 80% would be great. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think any taste of what was the old normal would be fantastic. And I mean, look, for us, it'll be fantastic to get you back out to Malaysia. If you're going to China, you're just especially Thailand, you're literally next door to us. It will be great to get you over to try a new club in Genting. We managed to get a year underway and it was actually in March, March 14th, Marcus Schultz played. March 16th, we were all shut down. It was so bizarre to see the two different uh, activations. I mean, it was already getting quieter. Um, Marcus filled the room as he always does, but you could feel there was a tension with everything that was happening. And then boom, we were into this mold now. And I know the one thing we miss more than anything is seeing a thousand people with their hands in the air, forgetting the problems of the world for two, three, four hours. Um, yeah. And I think that's something incredibly special. And you probably feel that connection as a DJ. Yeah, I'm, I'm missing Asia, man. It's like the energy in Asia, the clubs, the venues, uh, it's just incredible. So yeah, I'm missing that, that crazy crowd, which is like just jumping when you when you play your tracks for them. So I hope 2021, we will get back to this here and there. So let me let me ask you this. Please do share your music with us when it comes out. We'd love to represent. We'd love to share it with everyone. Number Thank two, you. thanks so much for taking the time to chat to us. It's great to catch up. It would be great to get you back out, but even better to know that you are doing so well. I mean, despite what a tough year it is for you to release so much music and to get the recognition you deserve through DJ Mag. I mean, you already had the fan base as it was, but to get the official recognition is great. So congratulations. Thanks a lot. And thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. No, let's, let's, let's make it in person. <laughs> Definitely, man. For a couple of tequila shots in Kuala Lumpur. I can't wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> it can be done. It can be done. Anyway, my friend, you take care. Look after yourself. Enjoy Ibiza. And we can't wait to get you back on a plane soon. Thank you, man. Have a great one.